Hello. This is a beautiful story about Snowy. I think Snowy is a workhorse. That means he does a lot of pulling. It is written by Birdie Doherty, illustrated by Keith Bowen, and it is a HarperCollins book. Snowy. Rachel doesn't live in a house. She lives in a kind of barge called a narrow boat on a kind of river called a canal. Her boat is painted yellow and red and blue. There are castles and roses painted on the side of it and on the buckets and kettles on the roof. Let's look very carefully. That looks quite cool, doesn't it? I think I might like to live on a narrow boat. At night, when she goes to bed, she can feel the narrow boat rocking gently from side to side. She can hear the slish slosh of water against its sides. Everything inside is small and cosy and bright, and she lives there with her mum and dad. And there's her mum and there's her dad. She loves her narrow boat. It's called Betel Goose, which is a kind of star, but Rachel, Rachel calls it Betel Juice. The best thing about living on a boat, better than rocking at night, better than the castles and roses, better than the splish splash of the water on its sides, is snowy. Snowy is our horse. He looks a beautiful horse, doesn't he? And I think he might be called Snowy because he's white. You guessed it. Snowy is the boat horse. She lives in a stable on the banks of the canal and her job is to pull beetle juice along the water when Rachel's mum and dad take people for rides. She's as white as a horse of snow. She's taller than dad. She has long, light feathers around her hooves. Mum puts a bridle on her and ropes with coloured bobbins on and jingling bells and shiny brasses. On under her tail, she has a stick called a swiggle tree to hitch the long, long rope to. The other end of the rope is tied to Beetlejuice. When mum clicks her tongue and says, come on, Snowy, she lowers her head and pulls. Then she plod, plod, plods along the towpath and her long rope stretches behind her and Betelgeuse floats along the canal like a painted swan. Please, please, can I take Snowy to school? Rachel asks her mum one morning. Miss Snuff said we can take our pets today. Snowy isn't a pet, said Mum. She brushed Rachel's yellow hair as if she was brushing Snowy's tail. She has to work for a living, like Dad, me and Dad and Miss Smith. Remember I told you that she was a work horse? She tied Rachel's hair in plaits and put coloured ribbons on. But can't she have a day off, just today? Rachel made her eyes round and big to show how much she wanted to take Snowy to school. But Mum wasn't looking. No, said Mum. Snowy has to work today. Rachel cried all the way to school. But Mum didn't change her mind. After that day, Benny bought a grey rabbit that shivered. Oh, sorry. And that day... Benny bought a grey rabbit that shivered like grass in the wind. Simon bought a fish with raggedy fins that floated in its bowl like a golden shirt on a washing line. Yasmin bought a stick and said that pretended to be just like an old twig. And Will wobbled his front tooth with his tongue. 
Where's your pet? he asked Rachel. Rachel put her finger through the buttonhole in her cardin cardigan. She's gone to work, she said. They all laughed so much that some of them started coughing. There's those beautiful pictures. Will wobbled his tooth again. His tongue squashed in and out around it. What's she like? Rachel closed her eyes. She's as big as a mountain, she said, and she's got bells and ribbons and a swiggle tree and she smells like a haystack. Everybody laughed again. Rachel kept her eyes closed. And she's got feathers around her feet, she said. I'd rather have my stick insect, said Yasmin. Rachel cried. Oh dear. She's a bit sad, I think. That evening, Miss Smith came to the canal and sat on the grass with Mum. Dad made some tea in the little kitchen that was called a galley. He whistled his favourite tune and toasted some tea cakes and put yellow runny butter on them. And they sat in the sun and ate them. There were lots of people sitting on the grass outside their narrow boats. Some of them were playing banjos and mouth organs and some of them were gossiping about each other and some of them were just enjoying the sunshine. Wow. It looks like a fun time. But Rachel went into the dark stable that smelt of haystacks and put her arms round one of Snowy's front legs. She rested her head against her soft white side and cried. Oh dear, she's feeling a bit sad. Next afternoon at school, Miss Smith told the class that they weren't going to have a story that day. They had all folded their arms and looked tidy and promised to be good if they could have a story. But Miss Smith had laughed and said they were going to have something better than a story. And there they all are sitting on the mat. You'd expect to have a story sitting on the mat, wouldn't you? She took them outside and Will's mum and Benny's dad and Mrs Lacey, the dinner lady, all joined them. All smiling their heads off and full of secrets. Are we going for a walk, Miss Sniff? Rachel asked. Miss Smith held her hand and told her she could help lead the way. And the amazing thing was that their walk took them all the way to Rachel's canal and right up to where Beetle Juice was moored. Wow. I bet Rachel didn't expect that, did she? This is where Rachel lives, said Miss Smith. Everybody loved Beetle Juice. It's got flowers painted on it, they shouted. Rachel pulled up her socks and folded her arms and smiled. Then she heard the most wonderful sound in the world. Wonder what that might be. It was snowy, coming out of the stable that smelt of haystacks. Wow, I bet she's happy to see snowy. I bet all the children are happy to see snowy. It was snowy with her white hairs like feathers round her hooves and her bells jingling and her ropes and coloured bobbins creaking and all her brasses shining in the sun. Everybody ran to her and gazed up at her with their mouths open. Isn't she beautiful, they said. Doesn't she smell lovely? Will wobbled his tooth. Oh, I wish he was mine, he sighed. Mum said, come on, Snowy, you've got work to do. 
she fixed the swingle tree behind Snowy's tail and hitched the tow rope to it. Look at all the children. I bet they're very excited. I think I would be excited too. All, <coughs> excuse me, all on board, Dad shouted. He and Miss Smith lifted the children onto the narrow boat. And Will's mum and Ben's dad and Mrs Lacey, the dinner lady, climbed on too, smiling their heads off. Mum clicked her tongue. Come on, Snowy, she said. Snowy lowered her head and began to move forward. Plod, plod, plod. Mum smiled down at Rachel and held her hand tight and warm. She put her other hand on Snowy's rope and they walked along the towpath behind her. Wow, what an adventure. That looks fantastic, doesn't it? The rope stretched out. Betelgeuse, but all Rachel's friends on board began to glide along the canal, snow and quiet and proud, just like a painted swan. Beautiful. That must have been so much fun. And there is a swan. What a beautiful story. I bet when the children got back to school, they had lots to talk about and lots to write about. I think Rachel had the best pet of all, don't you? Until next time, my friends. Kakite.